Welcome back to Witness Depot University. I'm Michael Parrott. Once again, we want to continue with our Witness Depot University teachings on witnessing and evangelism, sharing the gospel with your world. Uh, Witness Depot is all about, once again, we want to equip you, edify you, exhort you, and enlist you to be a witness and share the gospel to your world. Um, we want to cover the second phase of this uh, this school of evangelism, which is called the Great Commission, the mission, how witnessing um, is um, our mission. And so if you're looking for uh, God's mission for you, uh, you come to the right place. And we want to cover uh, the different phases of this uh, section. The Great Commission, we're going to be covering that. What is it? Uh, where did it come from? Uh, witnessing to your personal world. How do I reach into my personal world and be a witness? And we want to cover the great empowerment that we've been given to be able to witness, the great empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And basically, whatever happened to the Great Commission? Uh, where did it go? Um, then we want to look at the notorious mental block of the American church. Now, we want to turn to Mark chapter 16. Uh, we're going to start in verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, first off, right out of the gate, um, we see that he says to preach the gospel. Who's he talking to? Uh, does this scripture here uh, apply to me as a believer? Or is it, was this just for the apostles? Or is this command given to every born-again Christian that claims to be uh, a believer? Am I supposed to go into my world? And the answer is yes. You as a believer have been commissioned. Now the word commission means a command, an authorization, a mission given to a person or group of people to perform. So we see the word commission is a mission. This is the mission that Jesus Christ gave to his people, and he expects it to be performed. And so we see a mission is our reason our mission is our reason for existence. We've been commissioned with a mission. And that is our purpose down here, is our mission. We're to, we're to accomplish a mission. And what is that mission? Number one, preach the gospel to every sinner, every person. Isn't that what it says? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We got to be in motion and take action. That's what go means. Okay, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believes not shall be damned. So we see that uh, we're going to get responses of unbelief and belief. The people that will believe in the, in the gospel that we're preaching, the message we're preaching, will be saved, rescued, delivered. And he that decides to reject it, Jesus said, will be damned. So there's a lot at stake. Our mission, there's a lot at stake. People's souls are at stake because they must hear the gospel if they want to get saved. And Jesus said, I'm going to, and these signs are going to be signals, signs, confirmation. We'll follow them that believe. He says, in my name, they're going to cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, is this the word of God? It says that these supernatural acts and manifestations of God are going to be signs for you. It's going to happen. So we see that the mission is supernatural. It's not, it's not a start of a religion. It, it's not a start of setting up a location and renting a, a building and um, 
going out and inviting everybody to come on Sunday morning to hear me give a 45-second little altar call at the end of my sermon. No, that's not what he said to do. He said to go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every person. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back you up. And it says it right, right there. So then, after the Lord had spoken of them, he was received up into heaven. Now, this is what's been commonly called the Great Commission. This is the mission of the church. You and I, as believers, are supposed to be on a mission. What is that mission? Preach the gospel to sinners, to unbelievers. And it says that he is, after he gave that command, he ascended in, into heaven. Okay? And look at verse 20. He says, and they went forth. Who's they? Every, there were a, at that time, there were 120 disciples. It also says in 1 Corinthians that he appeared over to, to 500 Christ, uh, believers, disciples, and the 12 apostles. So there were hundreds of people that he would Christian believers that he was talking to. Not just clergy, not just the apostles, the leadership. He was talking to his people, his believers. And he commanded those believers to go and preach the gospel. Now, where were they to go? They were to go to their world. Where was their world? Wherever they lived at. At that time, it was in Jerusalem. He says, go into Jerusalem. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They preached at at 10 o'clock, at 10.30, uh, gave an altar call. No, 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 no. No, they went forth everywhere in the community and they preached the gospel. And the Lord was working with them. Oh, that's so powerful. Who wants to go preach the gospel and go on this mission Unless the Lord is with us. Because that's all we really have to offer is the Lord. And it says the Lord worked with it. Confirming the message. Confirming the word. Can he, can, God confirmed that I'm with you. And I'm going to confirm this with supernatural power. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. You're going to see manifestations of tongues and the Holy Spirit. You're, you're going to cast out devils. I'll never forget. Being in prayer uh, before we went to the streets one time, and I said, Lord, I said, man, it's rough out there. I said, yeah, people are being saved, and, 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 but boy, we're getting rejected, we're getting reviled, we're getting physically threatened, and God, I, says, I said to God, I said, Lord, Lord, you said there would be supernatural signs following my gospel, my witnessing. This is what it says. I desperately need you to confirm what we're doing out here. So we're in front of this bar sharing with the gospel one-on-one with people. Guy comes out of the bar, comes up to me, starts a conversation with me and starts talking to me about Christ. And he says, you know, I I lived in uh, Spokane, Washington. And I went to this church. And he says, every time I would go to this church, I went there a couple times, he said the altar would turn black. And it just scared me. And I'd have to get up. I just I'd go, oh, I gotta get out of here. And and so he would leave, leave the church. And he says, uh, he says, what 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 is that? And I said, I don't know. And I said, but anyway, I got to share the gospel with him. And I went through the whole gospel with my my Bible, my Romans Road plan, my Bible, and I shared with him the whole gospel. I asked him if he wanted to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he said he did. I said, you truly want to ask Christ to be your Lord and your Savior? And he says, yes. I said, well, would you like to bow your head and talk to God and ask God to be your Lord and Savior? Just repeat this prayer after me. If, you, if this is really what you want, and you, you just say this to God. God, and I went through the sinner's prayer with him, and he invited Christ to be his Lord and Savior. So he's going through the prayer with him, and I go, God, I'm a sinner. God, I've sinned against you. God, I'm sorry for my sins. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, I'm changing my mind about my sin. I'm sorry for rejecting you. I believe in my heart that God, that you love me and that you came down from heaven 
and you want to save me from the penalty of sin and, and you want to forgive me for my sins. And I, 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 and so then I, I want to ask G, Jesus to cleanse me in his blood. And the guy goes, I want, I want to ask you. And I'm going, what the heck's going on here? And I, and I, and I, all of a sudden I look, I said, man, there's something manifest in here. There's something wrong here. He couldn't finish the sinner's prayer. And I said, and I saw, to be honest with you, I saw it on TV once. Some guy saying, name yourself, Satan. You demon, name yourself. And so I thought, that's all I knew how to do. And I said, demon, name yourself. In the name of Jesus, name yourself. And he blurts out, Andor, Andor, Andor. I'm going, Endor. And I didn't know who Endor, what Endor was. And all I knew to do was, in the name of Jesus, Endor, come out of him in the name of Jesus. And that man, and by the way, he had his fiance with him, the lady he's going to marry, okay? When I said that, he collapsed on a car, literally fell on the car and then to the ground. And so then he got back up and, you know, the power of God hit him. Everybody's blown away at what's going on. And I was thinking, gee, what's this wife thinking? Maybe I better not marry this guy. You know, he's, he's nuts. But anyway, the long story short, we went back to the sinner's prayer and he invited Jesus to cleanse him in his blood and he was saved. And that, that came from the scripture in prayer saying, Lord, confirm our gospel. You see, our mission is not some religion or some uh, church building or philosophy. or uh, our, our gospel is a living God. And it's a living message of the heartbeat that he died for your sins, was crucified, was punished for your sin. Your sins got punished by God. God Almighty, the judge, came down and became a man and became your savior to so you could escape that judgment and damnation. So we're serving. Our mission is supernatural is what I'm trying to say. And so... Basically, the Great Commission is preaching the gospel to sinners, to unbelievers. Preaching is to and for unbelievers, not believers. We're not to preach the gospel to 99.9% believers on Sunday morning or maybe Wednesday night. That's not our that's not our mission. Our mission is to preach to and for unbelievers to our personal world. God's holding you responsible to preach to your world. Now we're going to get into that in our next teaching, preaching the gospel to your personal world. Teaching is to and for believers. Now we gather together inside of a building to to learn or in our homes, or wherever we gather. And teaching the Word of God is, is for believers. So, now, what is tragic is, is that 75%, this is, came out from Barner Research, a pollster, 75, 75% of the American Christians do not know what the Great Commission is. They don't know what their mission is here on earth as a believer. And right here we see Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Matthew, if you want to turn there, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, we see the other part of the commission. Now, once again, the commission is a command. It's not optional. It's a command to you, to me. An authorization, a mission given to a person or a group to perform. Your mission, your reason for existence, your purpose is to preach the gospel to your world. 
And you should want to do that. You've been saved from that terrible lake of fire, that terrible place called hell. Your sins have been forgiven. God has punished Jesus on your behalf, and so you, you wouldn't have to be punished. God has set you free from the penalty of sin, which is hell. You know, you've been, your soul has been saved. You will never be separated from God forever. Shouldn't you want that for everybody else? All right. So we see in Matthew 28, 18, verse 18, all power, authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go. He said, there's that word go again. Go therefore and teach. And in the Amplified, it says, make disciples. So we're to preach the gospel to sinners who have a chance to get converted or saved. So unbelievers become believers. And then those believers become disciples. We learn that to the word, we're taught the word of God so that we can become a disciple. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. So we see that we come into the knowledge and understanding and the wisdom of God's word and commands so we can grow into the image of Jesus. So we can be like Jesus teaching them to observe all the things I've commanded you. Now, God's word is commands. It's not optional. You need to obey the commands and become a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple means to enroll and educate a pupil, a convinced adherent, and also means a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, in the book of Acts, we have the example of the Great Commission. That's the only place I've found where we have an example of what our mission is. And it's to preach the gospel to sinners, to unsaved people, and teach the Bible, the Word of God, to believers. And that's what they did. They continued steadfastly, steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the instruction. They fellowshiped with other believers. They broke bread, and they prayed together. So preaching is to and for unbelievers, and teaching is to and for believers. Now we want to look at what is a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother in the sense of indifference to or relative disregard for them in comparison with his attitude toward God, and likewise his wife and children and brothers and sisters, and yes, even his own life, also cannot be my disciple. Now you cannot, now I, what I submit to you, has the American church pre, preached the gospel to every person? To the, are they fulfilling that phase of the mission? But also are they a, fulfilling the other phase of the mission, which is to make disciples? Well, Jesus said you can't be a disciple unless you, your love, the comparison of your love, there's no comparison. Your love for Jesus cannot compete with your love for your wife, your children, your brothers, your sister, family members, things, pleasures. It can't be in competition. That, those loves cannot be first place in your life. Your love and friendship for Jesus Christ qualifies you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple is a person whose love and affection, however strong, must not be permitted to compete with or displace this love and affection for Jesus Christ. Secondly, whosoever does not persevere and carry his own cross after me cannot be my disciple. Now, following Jesus, witnessing for Jesus, sharing the gospel with people, you're going to run into suffering. You're going to run into rejection. You're going to be reviled. You're going to be persecuted, some physically abused. Um, you know, the disciples, most of them ended up being martyrs. Okay, you cannot, you're going to face suffering. He says, and unless you're willing to pick up your cross and follow me, you can't be my disciple. So, a disciple is a person who's willing to persevere, endure suffering, and even martyrdom, martyrdom to follow Jesus Christ. Do you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? So then, any of you who does not forsake, renounce, surrender, claim to, give up, say goodbye to, all that he has 
cannot be my disciple. You may be a church member. You may be saved. But unless you meet these qualifications, you cannot really be an effective disciple of Jesus Christ. So any of you who does not forsake, renounce, surrender, claim to, give up, say goodbye to, all that he has cannot be my disciple. Wow. That's a cost. A disciple is a person that has total allegiance and transfer of ownership to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Paul said, what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Philippians 3, 7. Now we want to stop there. And in our next uh, session, we're going to be covering witnessing in your world.